What's up guys, it's Buzz Saiyan coming at you with another deck profile. Today we are diving into my Stormcast deck in Warhammer Champions Age of Sigmar. Now, another short-lived game, obviously you guys know me, I do like to cover some nice neat little corners of deck card games. The reason why I am covering this today is because recently a buddy of mine and myself took on uh, the game, I've been playing this quite a lot, and my affinity is really with Stormcast. Even when I first saw the game, it was Stormcast, so I thought I'll cover my deck with you guys. Now, this is the usual setup I tend to go for. Really, it might be a mixture of uh, which, whether the Liberator or Protector Prime is on either side, or Stormsire changes position with Evocator Prime, but that's about it. We have. Uh, exactly at 20 points, which is the maximum allowed, 5, 5, 9, and 1 here, and we start off 29 health. The Liberator Prime is really, uh, for all intents and purposes, a vanilla, but it works really well with the gen gen generic setup of the deck. It's a warrior. The other warrior in the deck is on the other flank, which is the Protector Prime. Actually quite similar. Uh, with the uh, with the corners to the Liberator Prime, but we get a really nice effect. Whoever is uh, opposing the Protector Prime, reduce damage received from the highlighted champions unit by one. So you ideally want to set this guy up uh, opposing a warrior on your opponent's side, or perhaps uh, a wizard warrior champion, or a wizard that can also cast specific or de deploy specific types of units like Stormsire. And whilst we're looking at Stormsire, is wow, a fantastic card. Absolutely love it. It is a wizard, but it can deploy Stormcast units and has a heroic act, which is a once per game effect. It can remove highlighted spells, it can remove up to three spells. Whoever is uh, up against him and whoever is is on the two other sides of him and then we got the Evocator Prime, I also love Evocator Prime, really really cool card the only uh, slight difficulty I sometimes have with Evocator Prime is that the first uh, corner is a removal uh, which well if you don't get it you don't get it you're not gonna be starting to turn Evocator Prime around but really, really nice effect again. Increased damage from this champion spells by one while highlighted champion is engaged. And this is where I need to tell the general theme of this deck as well. This is a reactive deck. This is more of a control deck. So you want your opponent to start playing their game. And then when you kind of have a feeling as to what they're trying to do is when you really slow them down, you... Uh, make it difficult for them to, a little bit more difficult for them to deal damage to you, and you deal a little bit more damage with effects like Evocator Prime's effect, for example. With this in mind, let's just quickly go through the blessings we have in the deck, and luckily, it is possible to build a, a blessing lineup with the order that they all just simply deal damage. And, you know, the best, easiest way to win a game is if you deal more damage to your opponent uh, and, you know, get their life down to zero before they do it to you. So we've got a Swift Judgment, which deals four damage to your opponent, but you can increase this by five if the highlighted champion is disengaged. So... Uh, this, obviously, you don't know whichever quest you complete, you don't know what blessing is going to be under it, but I actually tend to pull off 9 damage with this more than what necessarily could be called fair. Um, then we got a frenzied order, just a straight up 7 damage to your opponent, maybe one of my favorites, very consistent. We have a divine blast, which... Only 6 damage, you could say. <laughs> it's a little bit less obvious than 7, but it does grant us 2 health, which can be really good in clutch moments. And then finally, I got Hyper Snare Seed, 3 damage to your opponent, and you can increase this, you increase this by 1 for each highlighted unit. So every single unit that's on the field will increase this by 1. So yes, technically this could deal 11 damage. In reality, I tend to normally deal 5, maybe 6 damage with Hyper Snare Seed. Now there is a promo card, uh, I believe, that is just a straight up deal 5 damage that could replace the Hyper Snare Seed. I just didn't really feel the need to replace it. I'm not really spending a lot of money on this game. I just mostly play it because my, my buddy is really, really into it. Right, I'm going to leave these four up here. 
just to kind of oh yeah uh, liberator prime is a little bit light but to be fair it doesn't have any extra effect so we start the actual card deck profile with my favorite spell which is storm sire uh, storm sire is just it's cruel it really is, i think cruel is the best word for it so as soon as it comes to play it deals two damage and then it turns it deals one damage and then it turns it deals one damage and as long as it's in play uh, Whenever a highlighted champion deploys a unit, deal corner damage to your opponent. So if you get this onto Evocator Prime, for example, uh, and your opponent has already cast a unit here, this is straight up going to deal 3 damage. And then if they cast here or here, uh, let's say you may have rotated one, but they're still going to take 2, 2 damage. But even just straight up dealing 1 damage every time, they, you're just punishing them for casting units. And that is already super annoying. And the fact that it actually does deal that damage as well. So you get four damage in straight up. Plus every time they, they bring a unit down. And we have also unit removal. So you can like sort of free of space for them. They, they might come back there again. And then they, they will take the damage again. So it deals a heck of a lot of damage. This Storm Sire card. And of course it's playable with Evocator Prime or Everon Storm Sire. Then we have three copies of Righteousness. Righteousness immediately deals three damage when you play it. And then reduce damage received from highlighted enemies by two. So that reduces damage from highlighted enemies units attack or an ability uh, attack or a spell damage. Of course, nothing interferes with blessings. So this is not going to uh, reduce the damage by the Blessing, because in that case the Blessing is dealing the damage and not the enemy. Uh, there really isn't anything that messes with Blessings in messes with blessings in this game. That, actually, when I say that, there might be a Blessing or two that does mess with the Blessings. It's like, I think it's like set 2 or set 3. Anyway, straight up 3 damage, that could be 4 damage with Evocator Prime, and it just, in a clutch moment, when your opponent is about to turn a bunch of their units or a bunch of their spells, they're, they're all about to deal damage to you, well, another reason why you want to have these two guys is because you can cover either of the either of the flanks with this and still cover whatever is in the front of your other uh, wizard. So, um, again, it deals damage, but it also gives us protection. And then we got two copies of Light of Sigmar. This is a little bit... Well, first of all, it deals four damage when you play it, so immediately on its own it's fantastic. And it's only in play for one turn. It then disappears, but when you play, you can remove a highlighted demon, risen, or spirit unit. And what's fantastic is when you play it, let's say again, coming back to Evocator Prime, it actually deals five damage, and then you remove one if they have a demon risen or spirit unit it's really good against death it's pretty good against uh, chaos as well it it doesn't work against destruction and of course it doesn't work against order either but but straight up four damage that could be five is fantastic this is it this is our spells only eight spells in the deck but it's it's more than enough moving on to units we have one copy we can only have one copy because it's a uh, uh, unique storm sires curse breakers what a fantastic card. It doesn't uh, uh, it doesn't do anything on the first turn it comes down, which is a little bit of a pity. Nevertheless, when you go to the next turn, it turns, you deal 3 damage, and it removes a highlighted non-order unit. And what's beautiful is you cast it with Storm Sire, let's say, you can you can remove anything from, from any one of these. It is somewhat similar to Light of Sigmar. Light of Sigmar is, is more limited on this. Uh, but you have to wait longer with the Storm Sire Curse Breakers, but you do have a better coverage. So it's a very similar card to Light of Sigmar, but it's nice to have, of course, units as well that you can use to defend, you can use to deal damage with. Next up, we got three copies of the Hurricane Raptors, which, again, just absolutely fantastic card. It immediately deals damage when it comes into play. Uh, damage on the first turn when it comes into play, and then it goes and deals 2 damage the turn after, and as long as it's in play, the highlighted champion cannot deploy spells, units, or play abilities. It 
basically pretty much completely shuts down whatever is on the other side of the hurricane raptors and what's really 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 cool about this as well is that a lot of the removal is targeted to go straight opposing uh, not many removals will go off to other sides although we did just now look at uh, storm sires curse breakers which does that um, but trust me there really aren't that many so hurricane rectors pretty much for two of your opponent's turns will shut down one of their champions which is just fantastic and i i tend to use this a lot to lock down one particular uh warrior uh have something on the side uh tends to be used quite often by liberator prime to be honest sometimes storm sire as well i do like protector uh prime to um to actually allow the opponent to play warriors because we will immediately receive one less damage from their units um, but it still has a lot of flexibility and it, it deals damage pretty much straight up uh, I also run three copies of the thundering concussor uh, again deals one damage and then one and then two and as long as it's in play it's not quite hurricane raptors but it does stop your opponent from using abilities and so the thundering concussor tends to be normally played by the protector prime i'm still allowing my opponent to have a, uh, a unit in play but i'm stopping them to then be able to play abilities on top of their uh, warriors because of course uh, their units because warriors can have a unit in play they can still play an ability on top unless a wizard character specifically describes that they can play abilities whilst they are casting a spell then they can't because they're focusing on the spell but the thundering concussor again is a really really nice one even on storm sire it can be pretty good and of course all our units are storm cast so ever on storm sire can cast any of the units we run in this deck and then to close up the unit lineup i run three copies of long strike raptors now this is a little bit more of a finicky card, uh, it doesn't do anything on the turn it comes into play, but then it deals 2, and then nothing, and then 2 again, and uh, you increase the damage dealt, so 2 becomes 4, just on these two corners, if the highlighted champion is disengaged. So uh, this can need some setup every once in a while. Um, and of course because the cards turn first, only then you get to play abilities, you can't, you can't do something like well, I'm gonna remove your guy and then long strike raptor turns no you kinda of have to hope your opponent's not gonna be able to play um, a, a warrior in but if you have something like uh, a storm sire uh, spell out here then you are heavily discouraging your opponent from playing a particular unit there so you can come down with a long strike raptor here and you're a lot more likely to be dealing that 4 damage and if you don't deal the 4 damage they cast something down well then they're gonna take the damage from the storm sire so you're not really giving them much choice uh, either way they're gonna run into some damage if you have this little combo down and then that's it for units we do have a very hefty lineup of abilities for a couple of reasons if you have a look at each one of our champions have at least one corner that requires uh, an ability to be used. The Protective Prime actually has two. Uh, the only removal one is an Evocator Prime, and then of course the two spell, uh, the two Wizards have one one spell each. But we also have a bunch of damage. We have a bunch of units. So generally speaking, I find this uh, little. I think it's eight, uh, eight spells, ten units, and twelve abilities. Yes, that's correct. So let's start with the removals. These are uh, single straight up opposing a unit, uh, well not just unit removal, um, tactical removal can be used by any faction, so either war uh, warriors or wizards, which is fantastic, any one of our units can use these uh, abilities. Rotate an enemy spell or unit one step forwards to remove a highlighted spell or unit. So the first part of the effect, rotate any enemy spell or unit one step forwards, is it doesn't matter where you play it, any one of the four your opponent has you rotated one step forwards, which is actually brilliant. This could this can potentially be a double removal if you if you really want to use it that way. Um, or if let's say your opponent has something out uh, here, you want to remove it here. You want to obviously reduce the damage taken from a unit by protecting. Well, they'll just turn it, and he's going to reduce it anyway for you. But it removes a highlighted spell or unit from whoever you play it from the other side of the field 
Fantastic stuff. I love this card. Unbelievable that this is a common, actually. It is just so good. Have another uh, full play set of removals, which is in the form of Triumphant Smash. I love the art on this uh, card, by the way. Another ability that can be used by wizards and warriors alike. Remove a highlighted spell or unit. So that's again straight up whatever is on the opposing side. And then if a card was removed, uh, rotate a highlighted allied unit one step backwards. I don't really use this for the second effect too often. It can be absolutely fantastic if uh, if your opponent has uh, a unit out. Uh, you can just rewind your Thundering Concussor one turn, for example, or it can also be pretty good on the Hurricane Raptor. Uh, the best one is on Storm Sire's Curse Breakers. If you if you if you are in this position. You play this, and then you can go back. You, you get another three damage. You get a second set of uh, removal with this little combo here, um, which is absolutely brilliant. Now, bear in mind, as far as I know, just because Storm Sire can cast units doesn't mean necessarily that he can also play uh, abilities when he's controlling a unit. Now, I might be wrong about this. And if I am, please let me know in the comment section below because I'm still looking for a very uh, all-encompassing rulebook that has every single thing described and I can't find this just yet. I would love to know, so please let me know in the comment section below. But nevertheless, if nothing else, Triumphant Smash works really well as, as another removal. So uh, I, I do tend to run it uh, for, that, uh, for that effect on its own. It's absolutely worth it. Now we go down to slightly more limited uh, abilities in that only our warriors can use these. So it will be the two guys on the flank here. Now Beatback is a card I would really like to have a third of. But uh, I, I, I don't want to spend five pounds buying one. Uh, especially when you can get, you know, like three booster boxes for 15 pounds. But it's just it's way too much cards. But Beatback... First of all, it can go into any deck because it's not uh, a faction specific card. You can tell that by the gray, the light gray border on the card. You gain one additional action when you play it. And then you move a highlighted unit to another highlighted disengaged warrior champion. What's really cool about this is that you can either well, you can play for Liberator Prime, Protector Prime, doesn't matter. First of all, it can foil what your opponent is trying to do. If you move a warrior away, uh, if, if you move a unit away from one of that warriors that warriors that has a specific combo with that unit, for example, that's not great. You might be able to move it in the front of one of your other warriors that can then remove it and gain some benefit from it, like turning a card back or something with uh, Triumphant Smash, as I have just... Uh, alluded to. You can also bring something in the front of Evocator Prime on your opponent's side, so Evocator Prime spells will now deal the plus one damage, or you take in a little bit too much damage in on Ever and Stormsire, for example, you move it onto a post Protector Prime, and now that unit will be dealing us one less damage. And the fact that you gain one additional action this can often be like, well, okay, I let's say I'm here, I, I play this, I move something over, I get a turn on this guy, I then play a, uh, I play a unit somewhere else, and then I draw a card. Uh, it's just that game one extra action is, is really where Beatback truly shines, and it, it's a very, very nice strategic card. Now, I'm running three copies of Piercing Shot, because three run damage is three run damage, and again... Uh, our two warriors want to play at least three abilities to get another turn on them. Uh, so obviously Piercing Shot is, is very much a staple for uh, order decks. And then last but not least, I'm currently this is a flex slot, I'm going to be honest, but I'm running a Celestial Fate. This is a visit specific ability, so only Evocator Prime or Everyone Storm Sire can play it. And when you play it, Look at up to four cards from the top of your deck and draw one of them. 
you may then choose to either put the rest back in the deck in the same order or shuffle the deck. So this is basically um, card advantage on a steroid. It's not card. It's not card advantage. It's, it's more cantripping because you actually you're you're one on one. You play one card. You draw one card, which is still generally speaking good. But the fact that you select that one card from the top four cards of your deck and then you can either leave them in the same order if you're happy with that. Or you just shuffle up your deck and you're like, I, I don't want any of those. I, the the cup, the few times I played it, I, I really didn't play it more than like a couple of times, maybe a handful of times. But I tend to leave the deck as is because now I have an understanding what the next three cards are. I, there are no deck cards in this deck. That's just the fact that every single card I, I am more than happy to play but again usually play it in reaction to what the board state is on my opponent's side and i think that's the real key to playing this deck efficiently is let your opponent start to do their thing and then you can start to interact with that because uh, you know you look you look at our units uh, most of them rely upon our opponent having something either getting rid of their spells or making sure that you can bring uh, a unit here to beef up Evocator Prime's spell damage or move some something here that Protector Prime can you know bring that damage that we take down and doesn't matter which one of the quests you complete you know that you will be dealing some damage with your blessings and um, yeah that's that's the core of the deck Pretty much all of our cards immediately deal damage when you play them. There are a couple of tech cards like Beatback, Celestial Fate, and the Long Strike Raptors. They don't deal damage immediately, but they can, you know, that, that 4 damage can easily become 6 or even 8 if you if you are just a little bit lucky. Um, and yeah, this is it. That's the deck profile, guys. I hope you enjoy this. I, I certainly do enjoy playing this deck a lot, I'm not going to lie. I do like uh, the Stormcast specifically. Um, now there is a bit of a wiggle room. I do have somewhat of a side deck, but uh, I'm still very much working on it. Uh, I got uh, possible options in replacing uh, the Celestial Fate with perhaps the Silent Communion. Uh, that's just because it's an any. Card, but I, I don't know if that's going to materialize. I got three copies here of Thunderstrike, which again is a potential option because whilst it doesn't immediately deal damage, you then deal five rend damage, but then you obviously put yourself out to removal. Divine Inspiration is lovely, but it really is a card that pushes you to play very long play. Uh, I could see Divine Inspiration, maybe one copy replace against Celestial Fate. Uh, resetting is okay, but you know, with a 30 card deck, you're you're not very often going to be finishing too many quests anyway. It's the draw two cards that that is kind of really um, making me think like, well, that would be good. Depending from the format, I do have a second copy of Protector Prime, uh, which would come in instead of Evocator Prime. If, if it was a question of, uh, you know, certain formats allow you to side deck another champion, but then this would probably be the lineup. But I do like Evocator Prime quite a lot. And then I would take out some spells, and I got three copies of Skyball Judicator that could potentially go in for a slot. Um, it can be good, particularly against Wizards. It's really good against Wizards, actually. Uh, but my problem is that it doesn't do anything for two turns. Uh, we got three four strike liberators, which are also pretty good units. Again, it doesn't do anything on the first turn you play it, but you can increase these by two if your opponent has 20 or more health. This is particularly good against like a, I think it's a vampire or more 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 mordant deck that you know keeps on healing back so it could be good for that particular situation i got three copies of storm strike form this is by the way these the white sleeve ones are my current side deck um storm strike fulminator is okay because it uh reduces damage so that can be useful and then finally deals four damage to the opponent which again is pretty cool um but i, I do tend to find that i have enough removal that i don't really have to um you know think about including more damage reduction. Two Paladin Protector, very much same lines as the Storm Sire Fulminator, but um, 
this stops my opponent from removing some stuff. Now, because of my usual lineup uh, being the two wizards in the middle, this really can only cover uh, one of the warriors, and if you put it on front of Evocator Prime, then yes, it will. Uh, well, you can't put it in front of Evocator Prime, so it will only ever give you coverage for one of the two warriors. So, again, this is this is not really... I was playing around with it, but it doesn't really work. And then I have one Order Before Glory, which is good for card draw. Uh, it's kind of like the uh, the other end of the Celestial, um, Celestial Fate uh, card, because it does give you some uh, some card draw. And, and it allows you to uh, rotate one champion one step backwards to restart one highlighted unit. Now, again, I already have Triumphant Smash, which does that. And uh, I'm certainly not a big fan of rotating champions backwards to, to give my units necessary extra options. But it, it can be good uh, against some decks, hence why the one-off copy in here. So this is my current side deck. Not gonna say I'm happy with it because the the base deck just functions pretty well, but uh, it is something that is obviously on the agenda and uh, and something that I sometimes think about what might be a better little option there. But anyway, I'm I'm you know going off topic now. Join me next time as well when we cover some uh, weird and hopefully interesting deck profile or card booster opening or whatever else there is I tend to cover. Up until next time guys, Bussin signing out. Peace.